I request Professor N.P. Parker, Dean of University, to welcome our today's speaker, Mrs. Darshana Parvajan. Suman, do you know an IT? Uh, do you know any IT professional can have an? Yes, she is the one. After completing her masters in computer science from US and having worked in IT companies for 12 years, she has been instrumental in business development at the I Perma Group by implementing enterprise resource planning and has set her sight on multitude of new projects to fuel the company's economic growth. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our second speaker, an enthusiastic woman personality who has done something that one could rarely imagine, a dynamic entrepreneur, Mrs. Darshana Parmar Jain. The dream was to do my MBA, get married, have children and never thought about a career. As a girl, grown up in a Marwadi household, um, I've come from a very conservative family. So, uh, even talking to boys in college was a big deal and uh, it never happened. So, thinking of a career in college for me was, it was just never going to happen. After I did my graduation, I was at home one day and I wanted a cup of tea. Mobiles were new. So, I used my mobile and I called from my room upstairs to the kitchen and my father answered the phone. And I told him, can I have, I mean, uh, can you pass the phone to one of the maids? I want a cup of tea. What he told me was very shocking. He said that the day you have the ability to earn one rupee, you can make that call and ask for your cup of tea. And he hung up on me. So I was damn offended. I was super offended. You know, I mean, as women, the, the relationship between a father and a daughter is, is very, very special. It's, all, it's always special. So when he said that to me, it was just... I was very hurt. I'm like, first of all, you're supposed to get me married. I'm of age. You're doing nothing. You're not looking for boys. <laughs> what am I supposed to sit at home and do? I got admission into, so I applied, like that year I had applied for my MBA. Before I actually even got into college, he told me, he was going to do something, then I was going to do something. If I was going to do something, then I was going to do something. Simple. Then I was going to do something. So I said, okay, no problem. This was in like school after I did my 10th grade. So when I finally got to MBA, I missed symbiosis by like this much. A hair. I mean, I don't know if if you want to get an AHA source, to some karai I said, of course karai chai, manje kai. I told my dad, asa asa ahe, apan kai tari, manje bhi zora dhorna nai, pan kai tari karai chai ani admission kai chai. My father said no. I said, no, you have to have, I, I got in, he's like, no, through merit. If it's not symbiosis, you go to any other college. But no, no donations. I lost my entire year, believe it or not, because I hadn't applied to any other college and there was no centralized education. I lost my whole year. I was so upset. I went looking for a job. I told all my friends, it doesn't matter what it is. I will work as a PA to whoever is required, get me a job. I will earn that one rupee for my father. So I got a job in an IT company. With, uh, as a recruiter. Believe it or not, that was my first job. It was not as a programmer. It was as a recruiter with uh, Zensar. You all know it as Zensar today. It used to be Ikkim. And that's how my career started. I never looked back after that. So from being a recruiter, I went into being a programmer uh, and a business analyst and whatever. You know, what have you with the IT chain. Again, I got, I got married. I went to the US, did my master's. I worked with a company called Sanofi Aventis. They have their IT department. So I was a business analyst there. So for a long time I've done that. I went to UK, um, worked for IBM. So my IT career was very flourishing. <coughs> was I satisfied? I don't know, maybe yes and no. I loved computers. 
I was a very computer keyed out type of a person. I started with the 386, I've used the fastest computers. But it was never satisfying in the sense ki, although I loved it. So it's not true that if you love something, that you'll be good at it. Or if you love something, that that is going to be your passion and that's going to be your career. It doesn't happen. <coughs> After we came back to India, we had decided that we will come back to India at some point and, and you know, so I was going to set up an IT company. But fate would have it that I joined my dad in construction. When I did that, I had no idea of civil. I am not a civil engineer, but I have grown in a, in a family that is into construction for the last 40 years. I, Parma group has been in construction for the last 40 years and I started doing that and I cannot tell you how I loved it. It was like my calling. It was like, why did I not do this before? A civil line going to, uh, you know, going to sites, working with buildings, working with concrete. Uh, it, I cannot tell you how exciting it is. It's just unbelievably adrenaline pumping. That's what it is. When you take up a project, you go land scouting, you figure out how you're going to do it, you sit with your architects, you know, you do the whole planning and, and then a product comes out of that, a home which is people's dream. I mean, if you were to invest in a home today, it's a very big deal, right? It's almost your entire saving that you put into a home. So it's a very emotional thing that people purchase. And that, I think, is very exciting. So I'm going to run through uh, a couple of slides here, if you can help me. I purposely put a woman in there because it's, it's very rare to see women in construction. Can you feel that?
that pretty. So a lot of, now we are seeing these large columns. You know, a lot of engineering thought process goes into making columns like these, which will be aesthetically pleasing and be able to bear the weight of that structure. So, um, if knowledge <coughs> information is plenty in this structure that has happened in Bombay. This, Suzgaon Manav campus, this is in Pune. Who's seen it? Has anybody been there? This is the only campus in Pune which is entirely self-sustainable. Which means from the time that construction started, from that very moment their energy consumption came from uh, their foot, carbon footprint being zero. Construction to operation. Their entire water supply is uh, recycled. Their energy supply is generated with windmills, with solar. They are using all kinds of renewable energy uh, to sustain this particular uh, campus. It's one of the most beautiful campuses that I've seen. Not just aesthetically, but even as a product of use. Engineering marvel. This, marketing. This is a project in uh, Delhi, which I thought was just brilliant. It makes no business sense. Because it's a 450 acre project. 450 acres. It's a golf course. And in the other one, I This is the building structure that you see. Those are the houses. The whole thing overlooks a 250 acre international standard golf course. People from abroad are using it for tournaments and stuff. All they have is some few bungalows which are on the other side of the uh, other side of the uh, golf course, which are again for sale. So how did he make the money? Who can tell me? I have given you the answer. It's an engineering marvel for marketing. How, how did this gentleman make the money? Can somebody tell me? What model is this? We have anybody from civil here? How do you think he made his money? Cost of construction to hoga na? If he's selling it 5,000 rupees per square foot and he's selling 5 lakh square feet, how is he able to afford this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, golf membership. What else? What else? What else? Come on. Sports members. Sports members, okay. Golf is the only game which is the highest membership fees. Okay, it does. Maybe of your environment. Environment? I mean, uh, breathe. Oh, the breathe pure air and then charge more money for selling the apartments. Okay, yes. Space occupied by the uh, design. Yes. Okay. Uh, hosting golf tournaments. Hosting golf tournaments, yes. That is, golf is of course one source of revenue. But I'll tell you the real estate structure. If you don't sell space, you don't make money. Simple. Okay, this is simple logic. What this gentleman did is he did this 450 acres. Bohut naam hai hua ki, oh my god, like what a bomb of a project and 250 acres of a golf course. And look at this. From here, from Pune, an entire delegation went to see what work he had done. But, the smart thing he did was at the back of this, close by, he acquired 700 acres. And the 700 acres was then a Dusri township. At the Tensaji Nauzala, JP is the uh, company. JP Matlava, oh my god, that project, and JP ke project mein lene ka lene ka, pakka. And you go and see the 700 acre township is totally different. But it's a marketing marvel. This is what he this is how he started. The first 10 years of his career, this is what he did. And the next 700 acres is what is going to see him home free laughing to the bank. <laughs> so, very smart man. He did something in construction but very smart. So, why, why do I... Large projects. Ashish Bharpur Township sir. Kul te Patil sir hai township hai. Amsa township hai. Bharpur township sir. Tami sabre builder rata. Hya model lagta hai except karto hai. Because these are sustainable. Obviously, infrastructure-wise, government cut it down, please, I'm going to road karun, that's why I'm going to build a building, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. 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 But, by doing these sustainable townships, one, we are able to provide our customers with better uh, resources, better facilities. They become independent um, and self-sustained. 
as far as education, hospitals, retail, you don't have to go outside. So they are very large and complex. So it's not just keep building money and is hello. Shorter turnaround times. You buy an apartment, a customer comes first day with agreement. Mofa says 24 months madhe de amala. Adi ami ek bilde na paas paas varsha ami aramat kam karetsu. Atta amala daha daha lakh square foot. Ekka varsha bandha lakto. 10 lakh square feet. That's the scale we are at right now. Stringent delivery. Delivery karta na pan customers today are very aware. They know what they are looking for, what kind of product they want, what finish they want. You have hard plaster, you have double plaster, you have heads, you have curing, 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 you have curing. So customers are very well aware. I mean, the civil engineer is very well aware of our customers. They are very well aware that you have to do heavy fitting, you have to do heavy bending, it would have been better. So yes, our customers teach us a lot of things. So deliveries are very stringent, we have to be very careful. Increased competition. There are a saying in the builder community that if you want to build a dhabar, then you want to build a dhabar, then you want to build a broker. So, competition is extremely high. Volatility in market prices for material. So, we are buying cement, steel at very very volatile prices. So, today I can go out and market my product to save me 4,000 rupees square foot. But, if suddenly cement cartel decides that there will be a shortage and you will have to buy cement for 200 rupees in the bag, you can't say no. Delivery times and schedules have already been given to customers. Your commitments have already been made. You have to buy it, which means your cost of construction rose. Your margin just shrunk. Shrunk is not enough. So everybody thinks builders work at very very large margins, but they serve the government. Government regulations. That's a very difficult one. So government regulations, because today construction is not an industry, it is uh, not so heavily regulated, but we are moving towards it. Not an industry, manufacturing is an industry, they get a lot of uh, advantages because of that. Financiers are attracted to that industry. Now, construction is not an industry. In fact, in college, my dad wanted a credit card, he got rejected. Because the builder has a credit card. So, that is the reputation. So things have changed. In the last 20 years, the industry has seen a, a very different structure. Why? Because we've been regulated. There is a body even in Pune of builders. Uh, it's called Kridai. That also has worked very, very closely with the government to try and bring in the right regulations, to make builders transparent, to make builders accountable, so that, you know, as a community, uh, they can be trusted. So, 100 builders will do the right thing. One person does the wrong thing and he surrenders us. So then government is very strict with us. So these are the facets in construction. What are the kind of careers that happen? So I personally feel that here is where, although I've done fairly well in this industry, I feel that my other civil background is less than. I mean, five years or three years, civil is the work I do. And if I was in the position of IT, then I would have been a lot better. I feel that because domain knowledge is very essential, extremely important. Domain knowledge for whichever industry that you are in. See, I've been in the IT department. I mean, I've been I've been working in IT for 12 years, and we had a lot of mechanical, civil, you know, all of the other streams. Engineers come into IT. Why? Because engineers have good logic. But they are poor enough. I feel that. Domain knowledge means that you are working in IT, you are working in civil, you are working in IT. But you are working in civil, you are working in IT, you are working in IT, I'll tell you what the advantages are. So the first few, I'm sure all of you know, civil money to end town planning, procurement, sustainable design. This is big. Now sustainable design is very big. As a civil engineer, you can go into that and Suzlon One Earth is a very big example of this. This is a very big market. Taxation, consulting, channel partners. Channel partners means brokers. अपन ब्रोकर्स ना आपको मतलब इधर दिन मार्क करना चैनल पार्टनर्स में है तो फिर से ब्रोकर को पाइप आती हो लैंड एजुकेशन सो वी हैव पीपल वो आर सिविल इंजीनियर्स लैंड एजुकेशन इज बिग एंड हियर नीड्स अ लॉर्ड मनी इन देयर लैंड एजुकेशन में हम जो करें सिविल इंजीनियर्स आए हैं फील्ड में वो आर टेक्� 
लैंड एग्रीगेट करता तुम्हारे मत गवर्नमेंट रेग्युलेशन मधन क्लियर करता पैलेटेबल बन बिल्डर लाइना लैंड चे वीस टक्के वैल्यू मिलते ट्वेंटी पर्सेट सो दह करोड़ लैंड घू करोड़ इजी मन वन इयर लैंड एग्रीगेशन इज वेरी बिग दीज डेज बिकॉज नो बट नान ऑफ आर्स है टू गो एंड सीट विद शेक एंड यू नो वर्क इट आउट सो इट्स बिकम अ मॉडल इन इट से लॉर्ड ऑफ सीविल इंजीनियर्स हु आर डूइंग दिस एज अ प्रोफेशन कंस्ट्रक्शन टेक्नोलॉजी टेक्नोलॉजी इज ह्यूज टूडे इन इन कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री सो यू हैव प्री फैब प्री कास्ट फॉर्म वर्क जैसे तुम्हें ऐकत ना तुम्हार फील्ड मध्य सो All of these, like if you are an engineer yourself and you were to put up factory like that or to go part, to work in a factory like that, the amount of advantage that you bring to the company is huge. It's tremendous, and it growth that just very poor. Here, paid mother. Information technology. So IT uh, uh, construction consumes a lot of technology also. Uh, IT technology mother. We have building information modeling (BIM). So all of the plans, your civil, electrical, plumbing, all plans go into the software, and it comes out with the one uh, executable final blueprint. ERP, we we've implemented industry specific. I said ERP because SAP or Oracle is very good. If I say one one forty, I mean, hey, actually ERP is very good. I mean, you have to customize it. But as builders, you have to have a big team. Everybody has to have a big team. Ask these two people. What do you think they are going to do? तर कस्टमाइजेबल मंजर आशे इंडस्ट्री स्पेसिफिक ईआरपीज भर पूर्ण निकाले, सो देस क्वाड्रा, देस हाई राइज, देस स्ट्रेटेजिक ईआरपी, दे केटर टू कंस्ट्रक्शन इंडस्ट्री, सो दिस आर इंजीनियर्स, सिविल इंजीनियर्स हु वर्क इन द इंडस्ट्री, हु हैव गोन आउट एंड एंड क्रिएटेड दिस सॉफ्टवेयर्स फॉर द इंडस्ट्री, � so there are a lot of consumption of IT now and it's only going to increase. I feel like if your batch were to go out there, get civil experience and then get into something like this, you would be able to get civil experience and then get into something like this, you would be able to get tremendous value to it. Tremendous. But I feel that domain knowledge is essential. Gender diversity. So this is an exception. So in, in construction we see very few women. Why? Because the perception is that ki it's a very hard labor kind of work. Site work zone kaam karani ki ma. Ahe, site work kaam ahe. But amcha kari pa nata women bharpoor hai. But dusre bharpoor kaam asta. Billing engineer, estimation engineer, planning engineer. Because women are perfect planners. We are amazing at that. So those kind of roles are plenty. Plenty ahe. Manje civil madhe. Aani site work sudha are Quality in charge is a woman by the name of Surekha. I think she is one of the finest engineers that I have met in my career. Brilliant woman. I mean, loka ite ghavarta tila. You should see men as a thartharoin in front of her. She is like a tigress on site. She is like ti ali manje asa gham kuto. So we need to see more women. We need to see more more women in in construction. What are the challenges? Why I put ethical way of business first? Why did I do that? What is not ethical? I heard the I heard the word. Yes, yes. There is plenty of corruption in, and I'm sure it's there in all of the fields. But civil mother, engineering and construction mother, because it starts at the very bottom. Land purchase, first no corruption salu hota hai. The direct delivery parant asla. So when you're buying land, when you're buying material, cement, steel, there is plenty of opportunities. To do the wrong things. So, what my dad told me when I joined the business was, "Ki zar right na sale, the business karay chal. Simple. Don't do it. Nature of the industry is such that it's it's obviously uh, it doesn't enjoy the glamour and the you know the fancy like IT does. But I feel that this is a far more satisfying and far more lucrative business. There's a ton of money to be made in construction." Perception of difficulty, that's what I meant, um, nature of the industry. You need a lot of patience, a lot of perseverance. When we buy land, no, to get into, manje, pahila khadda khodne, tan doon varsha lakta. Purchase ke land Government regulations, clear kara, hi permission aana, hi parvangi aana, te plan pass kara. Manje, itka vaita ke doon varsha lakta tala. So, you cannot say vaita. 
you need a lot of perseverance. Bureaucracy is, is tremendous. There's a lot of red tape, there's a lot of plan passing. Government again comes into play here. Aggression. It's a male dominated industry. Why I say aggression is a challenge here is because it's a male dominated industry. That's a fact of life, but that does not mean that there is no place for women. Um, I do feel I've been very, very lucky because I've been supported very strongly by my husband and my father. Had I not been supported by my husband, and I'll say that very specifically why, because if he had decided to say no, no construction, IT office madhe chan, AC madhe kaam karayit sir, I would have probably done that. I would have probably done that. And all of you men are sitting, I'm not talking to the women, I'm talking to the men. You will get married at some point, you will have wives who have careers. And if you people don't support the women in your lives, it's extremely hard to make careers out of us. It's extremely hard. Because there are a lot of home responsibilities also where uh, my husband has supported me fully when I've been on site and he has said, okay, you know what, I'll, I'll take care of, I'll pick up the kids from school or whatever. And he has been on site, I have been. It's a challenge. Creativity is a challenge because uh, in, in civil, FSI So we don't make landmarks anymore. Collector office Such beautiful buildings they are that were built in British times. And they're beautiful. Don't you ever think why don't we build such buildings anymore? They're costly. They're very expensive. So even if you want to be creative, business doesn't let us be creative. Business as in um, the monetary aspect doesn't let us get creative, but that's changing though. Now, a lot of builders do talk about creating landmarks, creating good projects, which is happening. <coughs> that's my final word. It's extremely fulfilling. It's super lucrative. And it has a great future. Thank you. myself but I never did it to prove myself. I actually worked very hard because when I joined the company uh, we were in a little bit of a financial crisis so we had to get the company back in the black from the red. So I, I had to put my head down and just work, 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 work. And the result of it was you know what fraternity will respect you, recognize you if you do your job and you do it well. You know, and just, uh, columns, just uh, two of me, uh, so we can build columns by two dots. I'd have to divert that to Anand. <laughs> and if yes, where we have to put the dots? I'm going to request Anand Jain to come on stage. Uh, because uh, see, I handle the business side of construction. Uh, a lot of architecture work, legal land, all of that is done by me. We have split the company vertically in terms of responsibilities because you can't do everything. So Anand Jain takes care of all the engineering, all the financing, licensing, so... The answer to your question is yes, you can do it. And uh, see what typically how things have to be done. A lot of times what happens is we learn those and we don't encourage, encourage thinking outside the box. Now the, I, the concept that you proposed is thinking outside the box. Not a lot of professors would be amenable to that only because they have never worked on a site in their lives. They have never practically worked on a site in their lives. And really there is nothing wrong in that. What I am trying to tell you is it can be done. And it has become very simplified now that she mentioned there is building information modeling. Even before you step foot on the site, the model does everything for you. So you can input this in Z and say, my wo rod can't up. I only want to put two rods. Can you show me how the building structure will come up with that? What load bearing capability will it have? What stress bearing capability will it have? That model shows you everything. So you don't have to go ask a professor, you don't have to go back to your books and see, can it be done, not be done? It shows you, it brings out that result for you and you're off. And why is that a beautiful thing, number one? It encourages you to think outside the box, like she said, creativity. Number two, cost. If I can save money uh, by doing any of these ideas where 40% cement consumption or steel consumption comes down, I can transfer that saving to the consumer with a better product, better specifications, uh, a better design, 
maybe I'll give them solar, I'll give them something else because at the end of the day, I'm saving money, I can pass it on. If I don't save any money, I'm sorry, I cannot pass it on to the consumer. Then it's the same attitude. But that has changed now. You will never find a builder talking like that anymore. Where he'll say, to buy, yeah, Lena, to go. He'll say, okay, sir, what can I do for you? Don't like the flooring? Maybe I'll give you marble here. Maybe I'll do this for you. I'll do that for you. Because at the end of the day, it's a service industry. And it starts at the bottom. So if you come up with that idea where the company saves 40% construction cost, it can deliver a better product around the competition that it is and sales will come to you, not to the competition. So it can be done. And uh, if you'd like, we have this BIM software in our organization. I'd be happy to give you a tour of that. Come, sit on it, play with it. It's like a video game. You sit on it and all your questions, whatever you have, put it in there and answer it for you. You don't need a textbook anymore. That's what she's saying. That's the wonderful world of IT coming into the civil industry. It has opened up a lot of horizons where you don't need to be scared of experimenting. I have two questions. Uh, I already had a discussion with you. Uh, mechanical is not my interest. Well, uh, I, I, you know, it is a materialistic world basically. Money speaks everywhere. So after four years of my engineering, when I step out of my college and uh, you know I want to establish my contacts. See, you basically come from a construction crew. So basically you didn't have to face it. Whereas now my dad owns an industry, it is basically a mechanical industry. Now I want to open my construction group. Suppose I wish to establish my construction group, I need to consult 101 people for that. So how will I go about it? I mean, what are your comments basically? See, I'll tell you something. Uh, what I realized over time is straight out of college, being an entrepreneur, is setting yourself up for failure. It is, it is a direct recipe for failure. And I'll tell you why I say that. See, I worked in the industry for 12 years. What I've been able to pick up from larger companies, other companies, all the companies that I've worked with, is what I've implemented in my dad's company. So whenever you learn, you do it at somebody else's expense. You don't do it at your own expense. Yeah? And my second question is, suppose you have a discussion with your dad. I mean, suppose you sit for a coffee or a dinner. I mean, like how is it? I mean, do you have a discussion telling that, ha, uh, that is a wadi, a construction, a SMILA, a MOMILA, like that is your talk or like you even speak about I mean, social life, I mean something like that. Because once you know you get to that level, you have like proper talk, huh? Uh, yeah, construction, wa, usse baat hui, ye ho, ya, ho, wa. like is it like proper formal talk or uh, you get involved? So at office, uh, we keep it very professional. He is my boss, he is the chairman and managing director of the company. And I treat him like that. So if he enters my cabin or he's entering a meeting where I'm sitting, I will stand up and give him due respect. So it is very professional at work and we do talk about work a lot. Uh, if I meet him outside in the family, uh, it is quite a challenge not to talk about work. Although we try, uh, because I try and spend more time with my mom and, and you know other members of my family because I do see my dad very often, I don't see them that much. Um, so I, I keep limited conversation with my father outside, but I'm very close to my dad. So if there is anything at all, if there's any advice uh, which is not professional, it is my father who I go to. And uh, it, as far as uh, you know, with, uh, something about your first question that uh, how will I get a break in the construction industry? In that I was privileged. Uh, yes, I was privileged. It does open doors, but finally, if you have no talent to show, they close very fast also. Thank you, ma'am. You'll be a great inspiration. Suppose I finish my civil engineering after four years, I'll surely come to you. You can come to me for the job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I had this question. Even when we buy a cell phone worth five to ten thousand, we spend an hour, or two, or even days on Flipkart checking out the specifications. Now, you said a flat or a home is a lifetime opportunity. And what I'm seeing is uh, my uncle just recently bought a flat in Pune. So all. Uh, all the time that we got was two Saturdays and he had to finalize a 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs deal. And I see that uh, uh, there is a shallow interaction. Uh, I'm not saying interaction, but even if I choose to spend a year's time uh, into deciding the house, I, I cannot go beyond brochures or having personal interaction with the builder. So I see this as a business opportunity and key how uh, people, uh, how there is another industry waiting for this kind of interaction and I want to know uh, from you more about it. 
Uh, I think you have absolutely hit the nail on the head. Yes, when you do, um, uh, when you buy a cell phone, you spend so much time on the internet researching, talking to your friends, and then figuring out that 5,000 rupee purchase. But consumer electronics is not an emotional purchase. Sometimes it is. Usually it is a thought out, needed, uh, requirement kind of a purchase. A home is an emotional purchase. It is, of course, you've got to have the budget for it, but it is an emotional purchase in the sense when you decide that, yes, I want a home, and I go and sit with the sales staff, uh, and talk to him, and I feel that like connect. Then you decide, yes, okay, maybe this build. Obviously, you do your homework. Ye builder deliver karega ki nahi. Ya ye leke project solve to nahi karega ki char saal ho jayega. But what you are saying is an industry and it is in the nascent stages. There are a lot of people doing what you are talking about. So, there is a, a company we are dealing with called commonflow.com. It's a website. Uh, initially, we thought it's like any other website like Magic Tricks and whatever. So, these people are facilitators. But commonflow has gone a step ahead for us and said, you tell us, you want to bring your customer to site, I will bring him to site. On the way, I'll give him a tour of the neighborhood, talk to him about kya aspas aa raha hai, and uh, give him a brief on your project, so that when he sits with your sales staff, he's already prepped. And initially, we were like, yeah, okay, you know, he wants to promote his website or whatever. We've been working for them, with them for the last one year. Recently, they decided, okay, they're not going to do that service anymore. I'm so used to it now, as a builder, I'm like, dude, I'll pay you, what is it that you want? Tell me. We'll pay you for it. So he created value. You asked a question, somebody asked Vishal a question, that if it is not in the market and it's not needed, how do you create value? You have to create a need for it. You have to create a need for it and you're already seeing it. So yes, there is definitely a market. So I can Huge market. Going ahead with yes. It. Another question is, uh, all the builders are selling uh, more or less the same thing. Like, we have got 24 hours water, electricity and all. And uh, uh, the rates are more or less the same. So do you think uh, inviting technologies like uh, interactive softwares in homes, uh, maybe uh, 10 years later, uh, 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 internet of things and all will come down? So do you think that will uh, uh, itself be a USP, which will, you know, like uh, only with sunlight water it is 5,000, but due to some interactive softwares, uh, you can uh, change the rates to 10,000 and, you know, just make it a bit more attractive? See, I'll tell you something. You buy a cell phone. It's a need. Correct? Why do you buy Apple? Why do you buy the iPhone then? Why can't you just do with Nokia? Balasa mein milta hai, kaam hoi hota hai. Thik hai, chalo, aapko touch screen lena hai, buy Nokia Lumia. Why do we buy Apple iPhone? For me, it is bragging rights. I tell my friends, I got the 5S. Correct? So, homes are also like that in a way. See, technology will come into homes. Sooner or later, it's going to happen and it's happening now. Which means where we are saying, um, you know, touch pay, curtains khul raya, touch pay, tumhara TV on ho raya, you can do it even from your workplace. Uh, technology is being integrated. But does that sell a home? Not entirely. It ticks you over the fence. But again, the target audience is what you have to look at. So if you're selling budget homes and you're putting technology in it, you say, mujhe to lift bhi nahi chahiye, uska bhi paisa mat le. Mujhe khali basic ghar chahiye. Then you have the middle level, where you are saying, take a lift, tak thik hai, usse jada ma drama kar, anchor ka switch laga aur gar de. And then there is a third level, which is semi-luxury and luxury homes. That market, what you are saying, is, is what that market is. So you have to identify who your target audience is, and what is that one extra thing that is going to tip you over your competition. So for us, uh, um, we have a project called River Residency, which is going on in Moshi. It's a 34 acre scheme. When we started, there was nobody. So I was selling like a king. Within a year, we had like 30 projects come in there. So super amount of competition. I'm 500 rupees more than my competition, even today. Why do people buy? There was some amount of value we created in that audience. So I sell to budget homes. Okay, I sell affordable homes. 4,000 rupees ka rate hai hamara. Bajuwala, 3,500 mein bech raha hai. To kyun mere one thing that we thought the most biggest weakness that people have is ki homes leak, houses leak. That problem, that fear that is there in people is, is very high. So we said one, we will deliver your home in 24 months and second, we will give you a 5 year leak proof warranty. They did not want automated homes, they did not want anything. They wanted confidence. That's what we give our customers and that's what makes me sell my homes. Father. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, could I ask a question? Sure. Uh, ma'am, you have a lot of 
मोठ्या प्रमाणावर काम आहे पुण्या बिल्डिंग ज्याच्यात ते म्हणतात की तिथं सुद्धा तुम्हाला एक लो इन्कम ग्रुप साठी यू हॅव टू मेक अ प्रोव्हिजन नाव यु आर ऑलरेडी वर्स्ट विथ एस आर ए सो तुमचं मत काय की हे कसं होऊ शकतं मॅनेजेबल आहे का आणि मग तुम्ही सेल कसं करू शकता हे काय ऑपॉर्च्युनिटीज आहे हे बघ एस आर ए म्हणजे स्लम रिहॅबिलिटेशनमध्ये काय आहे जी स्लम असते ऑलरेडी एक्झिस्टिंग स्लम असते ती तुम्ही घेणार त्यांना तुम्ही रिहॅबिलिटेट करणार ट्रान्झिशन कॅम्पमध्ये तिकडे तुम्ही बिल्डिंग बांधून देणार गव्हर्नमेंटला त्यांचं अलॉटमेंट त्या बिल्डिंगमध्ये होतं आणि जी बाकीची जागा आहे मोकळी असेल ते बिल्डर बांधू शकतो त्यांना काय करायचं ते जे पण रूल्स प्रमाणे आपण करू शकतो आणि जे तुम्ही बांधून दिलंय स्लम वाल्यांना त्याचं गव्हर्नमेंट तुम्हाला टीडीआर देतं ते मी जाऊन बाजारात विकून दॅट्स वेर आय मेक माय मान दॅट इज स्लम जे तुम्ही रेग्युलेशन म्हणताय दॅट ऍज पार्ट ऑफ द बिल्डिंग रेग्युलेशन कोड इज कमिंग इन आता येणार ते मांडलेले आहे गव्हर्नमेंट समोर मांडलेले आहे आणि त्याला म्हणजे होकार मिळालेला आहे इट हॅज टू जस्ट कम इन फॉर्म ऑफ अ रूल की एनी प्रोजेक्ट वेदर इट इज इफ इट इज ओव्हर बन एकर एनी प्रोजेक्ट लेट इट बी अ मिलियन डॉलर होम ऑर लेट इट बी अ टेन लॅक होम इफ इट इज ओव्हर बन एकर द प्रॉपर्टी ट्वेंटी पर्सेंट ऑफ दॅट हॅज टू बी रिझर्व्ह फॉर म्हाडा म्हणजे आम्ही म्हाडाला घर बा whether you build 50 floors or or whatever you build doesn't matter you have to build it tomorrow so it is no choice it is no fun we get shit out of it and for not me they don't have like amcha building engineer cha kan kaam karte thi and it is so efficient ahe it is so efficient ahe see when a person is good and you know he can add value they get upgraded like this so i feel that when you pick a company to apply for a job na you don't go by the regular job nomenclature the regular designation nomenclature what you should do is try and get an interview if you sit with one of the directors any company will hire you if you have that passion that gut it doesn't matter we create jobs for people with the right attitude not with the right degree we create jobs for people with the right attitude that's in fact one of the things that motivates us as a director we personally do interviews i know he does like a 100 interviews a day when we are hiring because the right attitude matters you may not have the perfect degree you may have the college mein bahut masti kiya sat taka mera to agar main interview ke waqt 80% ka dekh rahi hu so i am missing out on good candidates so i would like to ask question related to id uh, as you told that you have worked for id sector for 12 years from sensor to ipo so what the basic uh, difficulties have you faced when you was a beginner and you joined the company okay it's not over there also maybe male domination doesn't come out so strongly like it does in civil but it is in india uh, culture is a little different than you see abroad uh, it is a little different so you have to work harder maybe three times more i was passed up for promotion um, to a jerk i mean that guy wasn't even in the company for a month and i lost my promotion to him so these things happen it's not that it doesn't happen but the one lesson i have learned in my it career is to keep your head down and keep working because you become better maybe that year may not be a good year for you maybe next year may not be a good year for you but you're bettering yourself you're bettering yourself and you do really do interviews i know he does like a 100 interviews a day when we are hiring because the right attitude matters you may not have the perfect degree you may have the college mein bahut masti kiya sat tak ka mera to agar main interview ke waqt 80% ka dekh rahi hu so i am missing out on good candidates that doesn't mean that I, if, if it's 50% and below i don't want to look at the resume so okay. so i would like to ask a question related to id uh, uh, as you told that you have worked for it sector for 12 years from sensor to ipo so what the basic uh, difficulties have you faced when you was a beginner and you joined the company okay it's not over there also maybe male domination doesn't come out so strongly like it does in civil but it is in india uh, culture is a little different than you see abroad uh, it is a little different so you have to work harder maybe three times more i was passed up for promotion um, to a jerk i mean that guy wasn't even in the company for a month and i lost my promotion to him so these things happen it's not that it doesn't happen but the one lesson i have learned in my it career is to keep your head down and keep working because you become better maybe that year may not be a good year for you maybe next year may not be a good year for you but you're bettering yourself you're bettering yourself and i think uh, there are, if you see photos behind there are seven only one photos <laughs> uh, and but here there are a lot of 
girls are there who must be looking at you and they must be thinking, yes, one day I'll be there. Um, so I would like to uh, know that how they, they feel inspired, like you know, how they should keep them moving towards what you are today. Because there are, as they are saying, there are society pressures, there are family pressures, and they have to fight against it. I think that you also must have experienced. So can you uh, tell these girls that yes, one day you also can be there? No, you can certainly be there. There's no doubt in my mind. Because you know what? Apan apna parents la push kar to limits parenta. Kasha kati party la zaina. Kima disco la zaina. Kima kai tari apna la friends guru ke kick la zaina. Even if, even if there is resistance at home, don't be convinced them. Ki ekda zaude, give it a shot. Ki pan zaude, ki pan zaude. Apan karto ki nai. Pa hai chasa ki kani. See, motivation has to come from within your stomach. It has to come from your belly. Outside motivation, you don't come here. Today, you are motivated, all of you are motivated, inspired, you feel great. Tomorrow, you will get a rejection letter, you will get a rejection letter, you will get a battle down. That's not going to happen. You have to have that fire in your belly saying, okay, this doesn't happen, let's try another push. Let's try another push. You have to try like a hundred things before one succeeds. So, in construction also, when we are marketing, we try so many things before one thing works. So for us this five year leak proof warranty came after four years of researching what the hell will work. Discount you magit lahe, but magit lahe kai chal dhane. But he khatri ki paas vashya parant aami tumche paati shi out nai leak hona. Worked. And see success and failure comes time to time. Now this is a down market for builders. I mean it's it's a really really bad cycle. But believe it or not, I'm not standing here and just telling you for the heck of it. My company hasn't seen the downturn yet. Why? Because we innovate. I will never stop innovating. Every day, I, I think every other day, three of us meet me, Anand and my dad, and we think of something new, something new. Kaitha ni dusra karu, kaitha different karu, azun kai karu shokto. So, we evolve. The day you stop evolving is the day you fail. But I know that the fact that all of you are sitting here and listening to these people on a Sunday, is, in itself is very uh, telling that all of you are very motivated and driven. You women are sitting over here in a field of engineering. So, you know, it's an applause to you that you're able to sit here and do what, what, what men used to do a long time ago. So more power to you and I know you can do it. And uh, I came back uh, from the US. So I joined my dad's business under some dire uh, circumstances. So he was not well, he had some heart issue and he was the only one, my brother was not interested in business. I was the only one in India that could have done anything at all. Then we came to the office in the first few weeks. My dad was extremely strict. He's always been the types that you have to eat your food. So he made me write vouchers. That's what I did for the first three months in the company. I sat and I wrote vouchers. I don't know how many people are going to do it. I don't know how many people are going to do it. I don't know how many people are going to do it. I don't know how many people are going to do it. I felt very insulted also because I was working in the US and in IT I was heading an entire department and I was going to do it. So, we used to have tremendous amounts of fights. I was going to do it very well. But at one point I realized that I was going to do it. So, I decided that I didn't do it. I have to do a value addition. In our company, there are two computers. One is in the cabin and one is in the accounts. And I was an IT graduate. I decided to do a computer set up. Then I had a desk for 10 people in the company. In SRA, there is no staff. Mostly, there are other people who work. In SRA, there is a lot of work. There are 10 people. I have to arrange 3-4 computers. I have to do optimization. I have to delete Microsoft change. I have to delete my temp files. I have to work. मुझे तीन चार पांच महीने में ऐसे काम किया था। Then every time I used to do something which I thought added value, I used to go and tell my dad मैं ऐसा ऐसा किया है। आनी कई कर्ज़ा था लेला नहीं। मैं मुझे घर से मशीन क्यों जाऊँ ऑफिस में दिस सेटअप किया था। So network करूँ ना पर मैं land create किया था। तेरा land नहीं होता। So I connected all the machines and I opened it on his PC so that he could see accounts from his own PC. So he was damn excited. He said यार ये तो काम जबरदस्त था ना ये सुपर बे काय तेरे आजुन करूँ दाको मुझे आजुन काय करूँ शक्ति का ते वहाँ भी रियलाइज दैट वन ऑफ़ द सेकंड इन कमांड्स वाज नॉट वेरी क्लीन मुझे पापा अकाउंट्स बगैर लगे ते वहाँ तन्ना कर दा मी योर अकाउंट्स मुझे बगत नहीं 
is not very clean. So we actually had to, uh, and the situation actually creates that uh, second in command is done. So there was nobody to run, there was no executive director to run the show. So after six months of working with my dad and doing vouchers and, and setting up plan and, and things like that, I was appointed executive director after she left. And then I started dealing with what we can do. I started the file of the land. I said, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. I have to do anything, do anything, do anything. What are the files? What are the properties? What are the status? What are the status? And I said, I don't have to do anything. 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 So I started calling people. I started selling parking. Actually, I don't have to do anything. So I started selling parking. So I started selling parking. Cash generated. Our company was in trouble. We were in a large amount of debt. So when I started generating money, my dad was like, "Wow, okay. So there is some potential." Idea is that if you say something, parents don't accept so easily. I think something little, 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 Yes, yes. Actually, I am also from uh, civil engineering. I mean, first year. 
बेसिकली ऑल्सो आय ऑल्सो डोंट हॅव अ सिव्हिल बॅकग्राऊंड म्हणजे माझं पण काही सिव्हिल मध्ये कोण नाही खरी पण समज मला स्वतःच व्हेंचर किंवा स्वतःची कंपनी चालू करायची आहे आफ्टर आहे पास आउट आहे समथिंग तर मी बाहेरच्या मार्केटमधली कसं म्हणजे हे कसं इन्फॉर्मेशन कशी गॅदर करू आणि फायनान्शियल सपोर्ट समज मला मोठी कंपनी बनवायची आहे तर काय काय क्वालिटीज लागतात समज माझं काही बॅकग्राऊंड नसलं तर म्हणजे फायनान्स आणायचा माझ्या कंपनी होतं म्हणजे काहीतरी स्टार्टअप साठी इनिशियली क्वालिटीज किंवा पैसा कुठं नव्हतो किंवा कसं अप्रोच करायचं त्याला हा डिफिकल्ट प्रश्न आहे म्हणजे आज आम्ही पण एवढी मोठी कंपनी असूनही फायनान्स अट्रॅक्ट करणे खूप मोठा प्रश्न आहे म्हणून डायव्हर्ट दिस टू आनंद सिव्हिल इंजिनियर बट आय डोंट हॅव द फॅमिली बॅकग्राऊंड इन कन्स्ट्रक्शन अँड माय गोल इज टेन इयर्स ट्वेंटी इयर्स फ्रॉम नाव आय वॉन्ट टू हॅव माय ओन कंपनी दॅट डज सिव्हिल कन्स्ट्रक्शन आय डोंट वॉन्ट अ जॉब आय डोंट वॉन्ट टू बी स्टक इन दिस जॉब फॉर you know the next 20 years of my life so very common question we are all ambitious it's part of being ambitious which is good but what people seem to miss is the big picture to get to that point even say mr ishwar parmar when he started 40 years ago he didn't have everything made out for him he also went to muskar dubai worked under some construction company learned the technology came back to india and said maybe you know i'll do this small two tenants ka house hard saaf karne ke liye to see how i can do it in indian conditions maybe get a small bank loan and do it so nobody starts big you don't become an organization overnight only because you conceive that that's your ambition but you work towards it you work towards it every step along the way so a lot of kids that come to our organization also have similar ambitions and they very honest a lot of times what happens is when i interview candidates they say oh i do want to work with this company for the rest of my life when he basically will leave in one year he is just there for the experience part of it a lot of kids come and say i want to work here for 4 years not more than that but in 4 years i want to learn anything and everything there is to construction so that i will go outside and try my hand at becoming an entrepreneur or becoming a businessman or becoming an industrialist whatever uh, uh, an industrialist so i would say the first step is you don't think too far you first join an organization which gives you the opportunity to learn a lot of times we get caught up in will my salary be 20000 or will my salary be 25 or will it be 28 i will join the organization that gives me 28 but i will sign vouchers for the next one year uh getting 28000 at class and to pro for example as opposed to joining a small organization where they will say you will go and stand under that building from 8 am in the morning to 6 pm in the evening and being a civil engineer you will have to learn and execute everything on your own now that is a challenging job and if you are ambitious you will say okay let me take this job because i will learn a lot more here than sitting in an lnt office in an air conditioned office signing voucher first step is get the experience and you don't get it by just conceiving and planning you get it only the hard way which is stand under the sun and do it yourself and actually i would encourage you work 4 to 5 years from excavation to giving lock and key possession to your client so you understand the whole cycle that is involved in delivering an apartment if you are a civil engineer that is when you can say that okay i have learned enough where i can now take the next step which is what if i want to go into construction myself where do i arrange the finances how do i put a team together what project will i work on those are all secondary you thinking about all of this now makes no sense because 5 years from now this industry itself would have changed so all the plans that you have put in today may not be relevant 5 years from now will be all outdated it might be a software oriented uh, automated technology which you had not thought of and today you are working on rcc structures so don't get too ha- ahead of yourself have a goal plan in life that 20 years 15 years 30 years from now this is what i want to do but to put those pieces into place start working today and then eventually you will move up the ladder but what is happening is all the kids that i see that are asking questions are asking questions right at the top ki what if i want to have my own company where do i arrange the finances uh, where do i get the land and what if i want to be a business man yes you want to be all of that but you have to start at the bottom like she said there is really no other way 
and if you do not have the financial background, you do not have the family background, you do not have the support, you have to take that first step and you have to start at the bottom. There is no easy way out. There is no big daddy sitting there who will say, Chalo, I have 50 crore ka check in ke deta, chalo karo ka. It's not happening. Maybe in movies you see it, but it doesn't happen in real life. See, it's a very good question. Sustainable development, while the concept is very good, it's having a hard time getting catchment in India. And like she rightfully said, it is the cost aspect, nothing else. The day we are able to bring that to a cost where it is affordable to the common man, sustainable will no longer be your concept. It will actually be part of your uh, design and planning and part of your construction. Till that time, what I feel will happen is two clear divisions are emerging in India. One is the luxury segment, where it is really a matter of pride. Some, you know, a lot of businessmen with a conscience, a lot of industrialists, a lot of wealthy people who have achieved a lot in their lives are now looking at sustainable development as their way of contributing back to the society, where you are not consuming resources, you are just making sure that Within the same resources, everything operates there. There is ample opportunity. The second part is the government has to step in and government has in some some pockets. In Pimpri Chinchwad, there is something called Griha, which is an initiative that Terry in, uh, Terry in Delhi has partnered, where what they do is to defray the cost. Where, you know, if I have to give solar, if I have to give... 1% uh, uh, self-generated electricity, if I have to do all of those things, recycle the water, have a water treatment plant, sewage treatment plant, all of the things so that it's a self-sustainable community. Those costs, they try to defray it by saying, okay, because uh, what we will do is property tax. If you get a 3 star, 4 star, 5 star rating, your property tax will come down by 5%, 10%, 15% rebate for the rest of your life. It's a very attractive thing for a customer where I sell an apartment and I tell him for the rest of your life you'll get a 10% property tax discount because you're coming in a Griha scheme. So that helps sell apartments and the other thing corporation tries to do is it tries to help developers by saying all the fees that you pay for building sanctions, for premiums, we will give you 20% off on that, 25% discount on that. So mentally you say it's not much, but at least I'm getting some of it defrayed. So hopefully that will drive the sustainable culture. But at the end of the day, it's all about the cost. Has worked in companies like IBM for 12 years before joining the construction sector. A woman of substance, Mrs. Darshana Parmar Jain is responsible for the brand makeover and technology, technological revamping of the company. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ansi Mehrotra, Vice President of EDC VIIT, feel humbled to deliver the vote of thanks to her. Mr. Govinda Chakotia was the convener at Vishwa Premier, with major support from his colleagues Krishant Agarwal and Amit Bhalirao. The scenario this year is very different. Our convener, Ms. Nisha Advani, is supported by co-conveners Ms. Tejasvi Belsale, Shishupti Ajmere and Saini Boda. Vishwa Premier 2014 is being led by a team of talented and incredibly independent women. I myself feel privileged to be Vice President of this cell. It makes me realize that there is nothing a woman cannot do. The need of the hour is right attitude and not aptitude, is right attitude and not aptitude in terms of one's degrees, irrespective of their gender. On that note, I conclude by expressing my gratitude to Mrs. Darshana Parmar Jain once again and request Mrs. Jyoti Gokhale, advisor, EDC VIIT, to thank her on behalf of the entire team. <laughs> Let us have a big round of applause for the only female